If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community and for supporting quality journalism. Good morning, Davao, Mindanao, North, and South, East, and West. This is your newscaster, Elijah Hill Cacho. But before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. For the headlines, our weather forecast at 3 p.m. Tropical Storm Marcy was 645 kilometers northeast of Burungan. Eastern summer with winds of 85 kilometers per hour gust up to 105 kilometers per hour moving northwest at 30 kilometers per hour. Local news. Over 4 million pesos smuggled cigarette seeds. IDIS pushes for local green building law. LTFRV B. Davao complaints versus earring taxi drivers lesson. Over 65,000 visits cemeteries on All Souls and All Saints days. National news. DOJ urged to place seven OVP officials under lookout bulletin. Mayor Garcia allocates a new ambulance to CCMC. International news. Trump offers darkness. Harris offers optimism on election eve in America. Democrats look to make new gains in state legislators and protect recent ones. Entertainment news. James Van says he has a colorectal cancer. Election stressing you out? Here's what to watch to unplug. Sports news. New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olive released from hospital after suffering, suffering second concussion this season. Queen Conquer. How a 30 34-year-old from Minneapolis become the first American world champion of a sport you've never heard of. Featured stories. American Kelsey bench, bench back crowned world conquer champion in England. Filipino boxer Neshti Peticio advances to the world championship finals. Trivia. Did you know that the Philippines is the home of the world's smallest primate, the Philippine Toshir, which measures just about 4 to 6 inches in height? Weather forecast. So today, the threat of Tropical Storm Marcy will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms to mainland Cagayan, Isabella and Bicol region. Rainfall may be moderate to heavy, so there's a risk of flash floods and landslides in a low-lying areas. Batanes and Babuyan Islands can expect partly cloudy skies with light rain, but no major issues are expected there. If you are heading out, a raincoat and a waterproof shoes will be helpful, especially on a more affected regions. This afternoon, Cloudy skies with continue in mainland Cagayan, Isabela, and Bicol regions with frequent rain showers and thunderstorms are likely. Eastern Visayas, Aurora, and Quezon will also have partly cloudy to cloudy skies 
with isolated thunderstorms which may lead to the flash floods and severe weather. It's a good idea to carry an umbrella and keep an eye on the weather updates for any sudden changes. Metro Manila and the other parts of the country will have partly cloudy skies with isolated thunderstorms as well. So tonight, expect mostly cloudy skies with more rain, showers, and thunderstorms in mainland Cagayan, Isabela, and Bicol region. The, ris the, the risk of flooding remains high, so stay safe if you need to travel. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will also see uh, partly cloudy skies with some thunderstorms. We recommend staying alert for the updates, especially in flush, uh, flood-prone areas. And keeping a light jacket and a rain gear ready if you are going out. Local news. Over 4 million pesos smuggled cigarettes is seized. The Regional Special Operations Group Davao sees smuggle cigarettes valued for 4 million 5,000 pesos on October 30, 2024 in Barangay 3 de Mayo, Digo City, Davao del Sur. A total of 267 master cases of cigarettes were confiscated after being spotted stacked by the roadside. RSOG Davao coordinate, coordinated with the local police and barangay officials to document the incident. In a related operations on October 29, operatives arrested two men who fled while upholding cigarettes in the area. Evidence, including six wheeler van and 41 cartons of Canon brand cigarettes worth 600,000 pesos, was seized is now held for further investigations. IEIS pushes for local green building law. Following the Davao City Green Building Code Forum, the Interfacing Development Interventions for Sustainability Groups renewed its push for a local green building ordinance. Policy Advocacy Office, Officer Milky Shane Gindon highlighted that this ordinance is overdue as current green laws only apply to buildings exceeding 10,000 square meters. Excluding smaller structures that also emit greenhouse gases, the ordinance would include eco-friendly measures like lead-free, water-based paint, and improve accessibility for persons with disabilities. Incentives inspired by Mandaluyong's Green Code may offer tax rebates and high allowances. IDIS aims to finalize a present the ordinance by late 2024. LTE LTFRB Davao complaints versus earring taxi drivers lessen. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board Davao Region reports a decrease in complaints about errant taxi drivers following the dis distribution of complaint strikers. Regional Director Nonito Llanos III stated that this strikers inform passengers on how to report issues. Simplifying the process of routing complaints through Davao City reports to LTFRB. Collaborative meeting with the Civil Aviation Authority, City Transport and Land Transportation Office and the Public Safety Office led to the Strikers Initiative aimed at curbing contracting practices and improving taxi conditions with strikers placed in all 5,400 Davao City taxis. Passengers is now a clear way to report drivers. Over 65,000 visits cemetery on All Saints and All Souls Days. The Davao City Police Office reported that around 41,000 Dabawenos visited cemeteries in All Souls Day in November 2, 2024. A significant rise, rise from the 24,000 465 visitors in All Saints Day. Captain Hazel Twazen noted the peaceful observation across 40 main cemeteries with no major incidents thanks to the security measures by government personnel. The Davao City Public Safety and the Security Office deployed over 13,000 personnel to secure public spaces including 
transport hubs and thorough thoroughfares nationwide philippine national police spokesperson brigadier general gene fajardo confirmed a ge generally peaceful undas with 40,115 officers deployed to key locations despite minor incidents. <music> National News DOJ urges to place seven OVPs official under lookout bulletin. The House of Committee and the Good Government and Public Accountability has requested the Department of Justice to issue a lookout bulletin for seven officials from the office of the Vice President amid an investigation into the agency's public fund usage. Committee Chair Joel Chua highlighted the concerns that these officials may attempt to leave the country and pending the inquiry into the OVP's use of 125 million pesos in confidential funds. Particularly, 16 million pesos spent on a safe houses in late 2022. A commission on audit official criticized the steep rental costs and noted that 73 million pesos of the OVP's confidential funds for 2022 were disallowed. <music> Mayor Garcia allocates new ambulance to CCMC. The Cebu City Mayor Raymond Alvin Garcia has announced the allocation of a newly acquired ambulance to the city, Cebu City Medical Center as part of the national government's initiative to provide patient transport vehicles to the local government units. This initiative, known as the Medical Transport Vehicle Donation Program, aims to improve the healthcare access, particularly the underserved areas. During the recent interview, Garcia also shared that the opening of the world's largest cliff care center at the Cebu City Comprehensive Cliff Care Center of Excellence, which is operated under Operation SMAP. The center, which will provide at least 260 free surgeries monthly, aims to support the children with cliff conditions across 12 local government units. <music> International news. Trump offers darkness, Harris offers optimism on election eve in America. The tumultuous 2024 election is drawing to a close with a track contrast between candidates. Former President Donald Trump, amidst unfunded claims of Democratic cheating, is intensifying a dark message as he campaigns in the battleground states like Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and to the Michigan. In contrast, Vice President Kamala Harris is emphasizing optimism and the promise of a new generation leadership. With over 75 million ballots cast, voters face a critical choice that could reshape the nation. Pools show a dead heat, reflecting a deep polarization while both candidates rally supporters in crucial swing states, underscoring the election's high stakes of potential for unprecedented outcomes. <music> Democrats look to make new gains in state legislators and protect recent ones. Democrats and the Republicans are fiercely competing for a control of the key state legislators in a swing state like Arizona, New Hampshire, and Wisconsin. As both parties focus down the ballot races, Democratic State's Representative Jody Switchbert emphasizes public school funding while canvassing in a Republican-held district. Democrats aim to gain a net of four state seats for a legislature tri trifecta, a feat not achieved in over 60 years. Despite a competitive landscape favoring Democrats, Republicans are working to maintain the majorities Increased funding for state races and is evident. With the Democratic Legislation Campaign Committee pleading $60 million compared to Republican states' leadership committees with $44 million. <music> 
Entertainment news. James Van Der Vick says he has colorectal cancer. James has revealed that he has a battling colorectal cancer. The Dawson Creek star 47 shared his diagnosis in a statement to CNN, expressing optimism and detailing his treatment plan supported by his family. He noted that colorectal cancer affects about 1 in 23 men and 1 in 25 women in the United States. In a subsequent Instagram post, James mentioned his intention to share more about the, his journey but he had to adjust his plans due to the media coverage. He expresses gratitude for the support he has received and is focused on improving his health. Elections stressing you out? Here's what to watch to unplug. As the United States presidential election approaches, here are the some light-hearted films to enjoy the touch on political themes. Number one, Election by Reese Witherspoon shines as a maniacal student body president. The red, white, and the royal blue. Next is the first daughter, the American president, Bullworth, Dave, and the dick this zany films features Christine Dons and Mitchell Williams as hippie girls in a inadvertently involved in the Watergate scandal. Sports News New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olive released from the hospital after suffering second concussion this season. New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olive was released from the hospital after suffering a concussion during the team's game against the Carolina Panthers. Following the 23-22 loss, Olive will return to the New Orleans with the team. Head coach Dennis Allen confirmed that the medic all the medical evaluations were positive and Olive is back with the squad. The injury occurred in the first quarter when Olive attempted a catch and was hit in the head. And also the neck area, leaving him motionless briefly before being carted off. Olive entered the NFL's concussion protocol for the second time this season, having previous previously missed a game due to a concussion. Queen Conquer How a 34-year-old from the Indianapolis became the first American world champion of the sport you've never heard of. Kelsey Benchback made history by becoming the first American to win the World Conquer Championship last month. A traditional game for a great Britain where players use horse chestnuts on strings to try to break their opponent's conquer. Benchback, originally from the Indianapolis, discovered conquers while living in Folk, England, and learned the game out of curiosity. Despite entering the tournament last minute, she showcased her talent, winning the women's final against seasoned competitors and ultimately facing against the King Conquer, David Jenkins, in the overall final. Though she claimed the title, Benchback may not return the next year due to the re relocating to the United States. She expressed hopes of making a surprise appearance at the 2025 championship. <music> Featured Stories the American Kelsey Benchback Crown World Conquer Championship in England. In a surprising turn of events, Kelsey Benchback has become the first American to win the World Conquer Championships held in Northamptonshire, England. Bank Benchback, originally from the Indianapolis, stumbled upon the traditional game while living in Suffolk and decided to compete after enjoying the casual matches with colleagues. Despite her initial Reluctance, she registered and went to the impress to impress the crowd with her skills. Defeating seasoned opponents, the victory 
has brought her trophy and a newfound title. Though she faces the bittersweet reality of moving back to the United States, leaving her future in the sport uncertain. Filipino boxer Nasty Peticio advances to the World Championship Finals. Filipino boxer Nasty Peticio, uh, Peticio has made headlines by advancing to the finals of the Women's World Boxing Championship in India, showcasing her exceptional skills and determination. Peticio, a silver medalist at the Tokyo Olympics, secured a spot in the finals after the series of impressive victories, defeating formidable opponents along the way. The Filipino boxing sensation expressed her gratitude for the support from the countrymen and her determination to bring home the gold as, he, as she prepares for the championship bout. Patricia aims to inspire young athletes in the Philippines and continue to journey towards Olympic success. <music> Trivia, did you know that the Philippines is the home to the world's smallest primate? The Philippines is an archipelago consisting of over 7,600 islands, making it the one of the largest island nations in the world. Among these islands, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao are the three main geographical regions. The country is known for its rich biodiversity, hosting numerous unique species of flora and fauna including the critically endangered Philippine eagle, which is one of the largest and rarest bird and prey in the world. The Philippine eagle is often referred as the monkey-eating eagle due to its diet that includes monkeys, and it is a symbol of the national pride and conservation efforts in the country of the Philippines. That is all for our news today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Elijah Hilcacho. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Good morning, Davao! If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community and for supporting quality journalism.